Oh, hey, how you doing? Hi. I'm glad that you came in. I'm glad to see you again. Listen, I was just thinking about that story. I'm glad you came in. It was that wonderful story where you were working, you know, at your accounting firm, at the CPA firm, and you get this telephone call. And you answer the phone, and it's that client you have, the president of the company, and she says, listen, I need to talk to you right away. I got a couple people in the office. I'm going to put you on conference call. And you're like, okay, sure, whatever. What's this all about? Well, as you know, a few months ago, um, they, you, the company called in somebody to do sales training. A sales trainer came in to teach the sales staff how to you know, improve sales. Okay, so how'd it go? So, well, the invoice came in. They want to get paid. Well, of course they do. So now the attorney pipes in, hey, well, listen, according to the contract, if they have to make substantial gain in, in sales and it's guaranteed. Okay, well, that's a nice, nice offer. Okay, that's fine. Um, well, did they do the job? Did they improve sales? And the vice president pipes in now. Yeah, absolutely. We increased sales 11%, 11.3%. Okay, well, I guess that sounds good. Um, and, the C in the, and the company president says, yes, but the accountant has a few questions, and let me show you the data. So, okay, I'll t take a look at the data. So she's able to send it over, and you look at it together. She sends it over via email, and you look at it together, and here you have the average weekly sales before and after training. Now, there's nine sales people here, Michael, Randy, Tito, Jermaine, Jackie, Marlon, Janet, Latoya and Rebbe. And it has their, for six weeks prior to their training, that's the before number, that's their average weekly sales. And for the six weeks after training, that's their after six weeks average sales. So the VP of, um, of sales says, look, they went up 11%, we gotta pay the invoice. Okay. And the manager of the accounting department says, well, I've been trying to look at these things, you know, with statistics in mind. And I see here that uh, two of the people just, you know, barely budged 5%, and one person went down. So Tito went down, Marlon went up 5%, Latoya went up 5%. So, you know, six of the people did well. Six out of nine, is that really, you know, statistically significant? So I said, you know what, that's great. I'm glad that you guys are thinking about this. I'm glad you're using your minds. This particular case is called a pair sample t-test. So a paired sample t-test comes up, this is what you're telling me, a paired sample t-test comes up when there's a before and after situation, you're using the same people before and after. You're gonna compare the results person by person. That's why it's a pair. And so I said, well, that sounds pretty sophisticated. You know, how do you do something like that? And uh, you told me, well, the easiest way to do something like that, there's lots of calculations and formulas, is to go to Excel. Okay, you know what? This sounds like it's gonna be complicated. Let me. <laughs> Let's take a jacket off for this. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I'm looking at this here, and I see that you're saying that in Excel, you got to go to Data Tab, the Data Tab, excuse me, the Data Tab, then to Data Analysis, then you select the T-Test, prepare two samples for the means, you click OK, you populate the two ranges, you keep the alpha at 5%, you click OK to get the results, and then when you look at the results, if the line that's titled, if the P, if the probability that is, in parentheses of the large T is less than or equal to the small T, one tail, because it's a one tail test, is less than the alpha of 0.05, then you must reject the null hypothesis. Um, and by rejecting the null hypothesis, you're saying they're not equivalent. The sales training worked and you need to really pay the invoice. I kind of see that up there, but you know, it would be a lot more helpful if you could show me exactly how you do that on Excel. You think you could do that for me? Okay, well, let's take a look now, okay? So you're telling me that, um, you're telling me, look, here's the data. It's not that difficult. You look here, we have our weekly sales before and after training. 
you know, before and after you got your salespeople, Michael, Randy, Tito, Jermaine, Jackie, Marlon, Janet, Latoya, and Rebby. And what you simply do is from here, you go to the data tab. And at the data tab, you go over to data analysis. And you'd go to this one here, which says T-test paired to sample for means right there. Boom. You take that, you click OK. And up here, you'll have to populate the range one and the range two. Now, I populated the range one with the after column C, and I populated range two with the B. You could do either way, but I did it that way. And I included the titles here. See, I picked up row three. And if you do that, make sure you pick up the labels here with clicking that. And I picked up the alpha. It defaults to 0.05. You leave it there would be my suggestion. You can put the output range wherever you want. I'm putting it in uh, F3 right over half, here off to the side so we can see it. You click OK, and up it comes. There's all your data, statistical analysis, and there's lots of information here. But without going through all the details, the best one here is we're talking about a one-tail test. This one-tail test we're looking at is, is it is it better? Is it larger? Is the new uh, information better and larger? That's one tail. And this here of a P, T, uh, the probability of T less or greater than small t on a one-tailed test, as you can see, is 0 0.0073. And... And that is less than 5%. And so it's, since it's less than 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And of course, by rejecting the null hypothesis, we're accepting the fact that it was a good sales training. It exceeded the expectations. It was not just random. Okay. All right. That was really interesting. I think I, yep, that's exactly, yeah, I get it now. But slow down on that last part again of why you rejected the null hypothesis. Okay? Okay, so I see there where the P, the, the probability of T is less than or equal to T, close parentheses, one tail, 0 0.007. And you're telling me that because that's less than 5%, we reject the null hypothesis. And you told me, and you told me, well, yes, yes, because... What you're basically saying is that the probability that this would have occurred without the sales training, just by chance, if it hadn't elevated 11% with those kind of particular numbers with those people, would have been 7 in 1,000. This is why we reject the null hypothesis. And so I said, well, that's really, you know, great. So you know, after you got all done, you know, what did the people at the company think about that? And he said, well, the vice president of sales was pleased. He's, you know, he's the one who started the contract. So, you know, they're going to pay the invoice. He's pleased. The president of the company is pleased on several counts. He's pleased that the accounting manager is examining the invoices, taking a look and trying to challenge and make sure everything's okay. And pleased that the sales results went up, you know, more than 11%. And hopefully this is going to continue into the, into the future. Uh, a nice impact on sales and onto the bottom line. So they're all pleased with your, you know, your analysis. And you know what? That is why you are one ace accountants. All right. You get a big round of applause again.